All over the Ozarks tonight, people are cleaning up as many of us face yet another round of storms. We have team coverage right now. Our chief meteorologist, Kevin Lighty, has more on tonight's weather and today's damage report. KSPR Stephanie Garland is near Branson looking through debris there, plus the aftermath of other Missouri and Kansas storms, including what happened here in Springfield. Was it a tornado or winds? Plus, some people in Branson say they did not hear the storm sirens overnight, how crews are working to fix that problem, and the other ways you can stay prepared and informed when severe weather hits. KSPR News at 4 starts right now. Keeping you connected. This is KSPR News at 4. Well, we're starting out here this afternoon with quiet conditions here in the Springfield area, but just over the past five minutes, we're seeing the beginning of a couple of little showers trying to develop. And this is what we were thinking was going to happen east of Springfield. Um, you can see just, I mean, this is just the very first image on the radar from reflectivity showing a little shower northwest of Hartville. And we may see a few more of these developing over the next hour or so. And yeah, we may see a strong storm or two, but for the most part, the severe weather like we had last night, we won't see anything like that, but we're going to be monitoring this for you. Stronger storms up north of the Kansas City area near Omaha, where they actually have a confirmed tornado up there right now. Actually, it's still very mild. The front has not made it all the way through. It's still 75 degrees in Springfield. So again, an isolated shower or storm, especially east of Springfield here through this evening. Good news is severe weather threat low for tonight, but it may ramp up later this week. We'll highlight that coming up here in a little bit. Jerry, please. Thanks, Kevin. At least a dozen families are cleaning up storm damage just southwest of Springfield. Several houses along Shawnee Drive and Battlefield, Missouri, have some roof damage. People who live in that area say they heard a terrifying sound overnight during the storms. My son decided he wanted to open his windows up just to hear the storm come in and help him sleep. And before we knew it, it was like a hurricane coming in. The National Weather Service says the damage to the homes in Battlefield was likely caused by 70 mile per hour winds produced by a thunderstorm. Town of Girard, Kansas is reporting storm damage today. Much of the town without power, schools, courthouses closed down. KKOW Radio News in Pittsburgh, Kansas shared these pictures with us. You can see the damage done to that building and a fallen power line and collapsed metal building there. And finally, you can see the tree is falling right there, a large tree in front of that house. Again, you're seeing damage in Girard, Kansas, after the storms hit yesterday evening. Cleanup efforts are happening in Arkansas as well. Just look at this. Greenland High School in Benton County was damaged late yesterday. Superintendent says about one third of the cafeteria's roof was pulled back by the wind, and that sent water pouring in for hours. Classes were canceled at the high school today. New at 4, National Weather Service survey team has confirmed a tornado in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Weather Service says damage in Tulsa was consistent with an EF1 tornado. And the National Weather Service also just confirmed an EF1 tornado two miles north of Seneca, Missouri. Service estimates winds of near 90 miles per hour. The tornado uprooted trees and did some damage to a church. Our team coverage continues. Meteorologists with the National Weather Service saying most of the damage from the storm uprooted trees and broken branches. They say the highest wind speed in southwest Missouri was 80 miles per hour on Point Seven Peninsula south of Kimberling City. Stephanie Garland has been following a survey team with the Weather Service throughout the Ozarks and she has more now. Stephanie. Jerry, the biggest damage we're seeing is here at this Hollister home. The National Weather Service says that this mostly rotted tree, it actually fell into the storage unit, killing one of these rabbits. Four years of this, yeah. Tornadoes. <laughs> Students at Hard Work U, aka College of Ozarks, are living up to the school's nickname as they continue to clean up the college after a storm tore through campus. I would thought it was a dream, honestly. I was sleeping and I heard the, the, the alarms and all the phones going off. I could hear them like down the hall, like there's like, seemed like a thousand of them going off. And that, I thought it was my alarm. I was like, dang, I gotta wake up already. National Weather Service meteorologists say the path this storm took looks familiar. It's actually a lead day of 2012. So about four years ago, we had a tornado uh, that took a very similar path to this damage here. Uh, so far today, though, we want to make it very clear we have not had any evidence of tornado damage at this point. The family says they were inside 
inside this Hollister home when the storm blew into the neighborhood. I was standing at the end of the kitchen table and she was actually coming out of the son's bedroom okay. when the trees came through. And construction crews estimate it'll take eight months to repair the damage. Not so at College of the Ozarks. Probably a couple days, I would imagine. Senior Aaron Hall graduates in two weeks. As soon as I slow down a little bit, maybe I'll be able to celebrate. Been busy. But he and folks, other folks that are impacted by the severe storm say that it'll be a busy couple of weeks before they're able to get that much needed rest. Now, the National Weather Service does say that 75 mile per hour straight line winds tore through much of the city of Hollister. Jerry? And you can see the damage there. Stephanie Garland, thanks so much. Hollister's fire chief tells us the only injuries reported so far have been a man whose elbow was injured in the storm. Well, that's not all the damage that was done. Our chief meteorologist Kevin Lighty joins us now for a look at the other areas of the Ozarks reporting storm damage. Kevin? Yeah, there were nearly 300 severe weather reports uh, just yesterday. You can see it stretching from portions of Texas through Oklahoma to Kansas. Now you can see the different dots here corresponding to hail and wind gusts and wind damage. We've got a lot of blue dots, and we're gonna zoom in here, into southwest Missouri. Each one of these, a report of some kind of wind damage. You can see as they came across Kansas and Oklahoma, near the Joplin area, over near Seneca there. To the east, they go into Springfield, and they can see all the damage down there into the Hollister and Branson area. So several reports coming in with these storms. While there were not a lot of tornadoes, but there were far more wind damage reports, far more people affected by the severe weather yesterday as a result of those very strong straight line damaging winds. Jerry, Lee? Something to see. Kevin, thanks so much. Some say they did not hear the warning after strong storms hit last night. KSBR Sheena Elsie shows you what crews are trying to do to fix it and what they say you can do. It's the warning some say they never heard and the sound others say didn't sound right. It kind of got muffled or it was like it was not on anymore. Linda Mitchell was staying in a Branson hotel about a mile away from a siren, one that was supposed to go off before the overnight storms. One person in our party didn't wake up at all. And they're not alone. There were reports at least two sirens didn't work when fire crews sounded the alarm here. This siren controls all the other sirens in Branson. They say it was working fine, but they're checking all of the other ones like it for any problems. We'll do that with spot checks today. The fire chief says the problem sirens passed the sound check, but he says a glitch in the older systems may be to blame. We have 23 outdoor warning sirens. Uh, those range anywhere from the 1980s purchases uh, to current uh, technology. He says they do monthly testing and pay thousands to keep the sirens working, but he says you need to have your own plan. No weather radios first in the homes and the businesses, then down to the Branson alerts in our Branson community specifically, then down to outdoor warning sirens, smartphone apps. Just in case you don't get the warning. In Branson, Sheena Elsie, KSPR News. And a reminder, those storm sirens are for people who are outside. They're not designed to wake people up inside. The Branson Fire Chief says you should also plan out a safe place to go and have an emergency kit when storms turn severe. Uh, wrapping up our team coverage, we want to make sure that you know how to stay informed about our ever-changing weather here in the Ozarks. Just go to KSPR.com. Any weather alerts will be posted right at the top of the homepage. And if you click on the weather tab at the top of the screen, you'll see interactive radar as well as our latest forecast so you can plan the rest of your week. I'll show you a few pictures that viewers sent in to us coming up a little bit later in our newscast.